Uh, my name is Hannah Clapham, and I'm going to talk about my poster, which is Modelling Dengue Pathogenesis, Considering the Differences uh, Between Primary and Secondary Infection. I'll explain briefly what those are now. Uh, dengue is an infectious virus. Uh, it's found in many areas across the world, and there's four distinct serotypes, dengue 1 to 4. There's a spectrum of disease, um, ranging from asymptomatic, or certainly not presenting in healthcare settings, through to fever uh, through to much more severe, which was termed DHF, dengue hemorrhagic fever, or that severe dengue. Um, it's thought that uh, a primary infection with one serotype leads to lifelong immunity to that serotype, and then a secondary infection is a subsequent infection with a second different serotype. And um, it's thought that this secondary infection is more likely to be severe, and there's a few different theories for this, um, enhanced and all antigenic the model I'm describing here is uh, you know, described by these equations, um, and it's a within-host model considering target cells, virus, uh, that infect these target cells, uh, go on to produce more virus, and at the same time a very simple immune response limiting uh, this process. It's been considered previously for chronic infections, such as HIV, and more recently for acute infections like influenza, um, of which dengue is uh, the infection period is about up to two weeks. I'm currently fitting this model to viral titer data which has been collected by my collaborators in Vietnam um, and this is uh, people who uh, hospitalised cases of dengue. Uh, we have different serotypes but here I'm talking about the serotype 1 cases and they're classified as either primary or secondary dengue. Um, and I've been fitting to this uh, data using uh, MCMC and a Bayesian framework. Uh, what I have here is the black dots is the viral titer data and the grey uh, lines is the model output which is a sample from the posterior. And you can see we can get a fairly good fit to the data but we obviously have much uncertainty in the early period and in this uh, immune response uh, that's very general at the moment and we don't currently have any data. Um, so we've been considering the primary and the secondary infections um, and any any parameter differences that there might be and we find that there's three different ways that we could describe those uh, the differences that we see with various parameter uh, differences. Um, these couple of them could be possibly consistent with the enhancement theory and another one with the antigenic sin um, and there's more work to be done uh, with immunological measurements to uh, distinguish between these, and that's what I'm hoping to move on to next with antibody type measurements throughout infection. Um, this method uh, can also be used to consider the infectiousness of a person throughout uh, uh, infection, um, so where this translates to a probability of infecting a mosquito if bitten, um, and we can consider antivirals, so the effect of these throughout uh, on the infection and any transmission.